YouTube, today we're on an account that hasn't spent money in three years, but this account is VIP9 from way back when, and it's an account that's been playing Idle Heroes as long as I have. It's level 404 and belongs to none other than John Nomad. This account is absolutely stacked. Take a look at the bag. We've got crystals, we've got stellars, we've got a ton of bee stones. Look at his chests. We are absolutely stacked. Some of these chests you may never have seen before. And on top of that, guys, take a look at his heroes. He has tons of stellar and resources already invested in these guys. So how do you help a hoarder like this who's been sitting on a ton of stuff hoping to make progress and waiting for a time that he could catch me so I could help his account in its right direction to move forwards. Well, what we're going to be doing today is we have eight core of origin chests. So we're going to be setting him up for what is going to be a really solid late game account for people that do not have a tier heroes. If we take a look at his celestial island, he only has two maxed homes. He doesn't have the third. That's completely understandable. Uh, so we're just focusing on having two main homeowners. That's going to be Alamac and Vulcan. We're going to be opening a ton of his stuff. We're going to be going in the treasure train as we have over 150 tickets to go ahead and blast in the hero token. And we've got a bunch of awakens to do because we've got all of these cores and it's a soul awakening session right now. So we're going to be minus stone back for doing this. This is a huge leap forwards for this account and we're going to make a lot of progress from doing this. And fingers crossed, it's going to absolutely transform what you see here. So we need to start by stripping things back before we send things forwards. So what we're going to do, we're going to rip down some of the big heroes that we have here to give us some materials to get started. We've got Aspen, we've got Vesa, we've got Jara. We aren't going to be needing them anymore. So we are going to tear them down to get started. So we've removed all those heroes from basically every single arena and game mode they were in. And now we're going to regress them to get our materials back. So Aspen's going to go in here and we'll regress him. That's going to get us a ton of food back. We're going to do the same thing here with Vesa. And now we're going to do the same with Jara. There we go. That gets us a ton of resources back. Now, before you start worrying, this guy has already done everything he needs to in the glory challenge so it's not going to affect us by doing this now what that has done is filled up our bag space so we need to go ahead and start spending this all right to give us something for broken spaces i'm going to use this dark food to build another elena on this account because we've got a carry we've got transcended elena so let's get normal elena we've got four copies in the bag here so we'll summon these there we go and we need to make a refive but i'll leave that for now so one thing we're going to be needing if we're building a Vulcan is we need his tenants. We have a Tussilago here, so it's important that we get her built. We've got this copy locked. So let's unlock that and let's build Tussilago to 10 star. There we go. That is a 10 star Tussilago built and prepped. Now the other hero we'll be needing is Natalia. You have six copies here and I'm pretty certain you don't have one pre-built. Not that I'm seeing, no. I don't see any Natalias here, not in the Transcendences. So with these three Natalia copies we have here, we're going to summon these six and we're going to build her up as well. So we'll feed a Tara away, throw in a nine star and that's going to be 10 star Natalia as well. Now, whilst we're at it, we need to make that Natalia a Transcendence hero. So let's go to the Evolution Cube and let's put her in. There we go. Okay, next on our to-do list, you'll notice we do not have an Alamac. So we're going to want him on the account as well. So we've got this E5 Alamac right here. So we put our E5 Alamac in here. Let's transcend him. And there you go. That's a Hyperspace Hunter Alamac. Oh, bro has a B Mockman. That's lovely. So we're going to go ahead and chuck this onto this dude. Because that's going to be a tenant for our Vulcan. Nice. So with that, let's make this Mockman to E5. And whilst we're at it, I'm also going to be making Tussilago and the DGN to E5 as well. So there we go. We've got DGN at E5. We've got Tussilago at E5 and we have Mockman at E5. So now we need to build some more heroes. And now I've got Alamac on the mind. So we've already got ourselves E5 Alamac built up as a Transcendence hero. So let's quickly level him here. But we're also going to be wanting Sword Flash. Fortunately, we have a Seer down here and she's already got a B-Stone. So let's put her in the evolution cube 
and get her made. There you go. Sword Flash. So we've got Stark vs. Homejung and Sword Flash for Alamac. We've got DGN and Eos for Vulcan. We've got Elena, we've got Freya, we've got Halora, we've got Betty. Is there any hero that we're missing? Oh, tenants for Alamac. That's who. So we're going to need to build ourselves some tenants. So, Alamac's tenants are Fiona and Alamac. We've already got the Fiona, which is nice. So we just need to build a second Alamac. If I use just normal forms here, we get four of these. Let's build an E5 Alamac. So I'm going to go to the bag. Down here, we've got these six-star puppet chests. Let's get three fortress puppets and build ourselves a 10-star Alamac using them. So for 10-star Alamac, we'll use the D as the base copy, and then we'll use blank copies like this. Now we need 13 fodder heroes. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then we'll just go with 9, 10, 11, 12, and we'll use this penny, 13. Now we put in our 6 stars, 9 star puppet we just pulled, and there's an Alamac. To make him E5, we're going to need 2 more 9 star puppets, so we'll pull 2 of these, and let's get him made up. All right, next up on our to-do list, we're going to go ahead and strip the Stellar Shards off the heroes that don't need it. So this Flora, she was once a tenant for Vesa. We'll remove this, get some Stellars back. We'll do the same thing for Rogan here. But I'm going to leave it on Olivia and Ignis for now. Just because if we can keep them around, we can use them in Star Expedition stuff. We've also got this Aspen here. Not using normal Lord of Fear Aspen anymore, so we'll just go ahead and take this 3 million back. And now I need to get all our Transcendence heroes we just made to Void 4. And Seer, I'm going to take her up to Void 3. Let's do it. So we've got our Stellar Shards assigned now to our heroes to get them at least to Void 4. So now it's time to start thinking about how best to use our 38 million to hit Tree of Origin. And I think that's going to be really, really easy. I think we can Tree of Origin, Alamac and Vulcan, no problem. We need to do Natalie as well. So let's get all three of them to Tree of Origin 5 and see where that leaves us. So we've got Tree of Origin 5 on Natalia, Alamac, and Vulcan. That's leaving us with still a whopping 18 million Stellar Shards. So I think we can put Destiny onto this Vulcan. For that though, we're going to need to go ahead and get him a core. Fortunately, we have a bunch of core chests in the bag which are going to make this possible. So let's go check our core of Origin first to see what shards we have. We've got a little bit of Halora coming in here. And Betty's only 1 out of 100. So what we'll do is we'll use these core chests to get Vulcans. So there you go. That is a noble core for Doom Terminator Vulcan. Next up, we need his subs. Fortunately, we had loads of subs left over from destroying the Vesa, the Jara, and the Aspen. So this has been an easy do. Right, we're on 24,000 for this final one here. Do, do we have another tiny chest? Yes, we do. That's quite helpful. So we'll use this on the last passive. There we go, that's 32 there. We'll use these. Again, last passive. So now I just need literally just 1,200. And I'm just going to use one of these here. There you go. So that's another upgrade here on Vulcan. So now we just need that 45k chest to finish this off. So next on our to-do list is to start doing Awakens. Now for our Transcendence Heroes, we're going to need a Awaken here on Natalie. So let's use a B-Stone for this. Fingers crossed we get something good, man. If we get a really good attack stat, that's what we're looking for. Wish us luck, guys. Let's do this. Okay, good. We got green. Green across the board. 4,200. Nice. Terrible bonus stats, but nice. That is solid for a B. That is a very good B copy. Now for the Alamac. Let's see if we can keep this look going. Drop a B on him. Okay, starting off with green in attack. That's nice. Ah, what? Ew. B minus, B minus, B plus. Block holy damage is nice. But that's a really weird copy. Now the fun bit. Let's do a B plus on a Vulcan and see if we can get an A in attack. Here we go. Come on. Okay, it's, it's, it's green. With... Oh, that's not bad. That's not bad. That's a lot of HP, bro. That's a chunky boy. Getting an A in HP. 5,500 solid, man. 4,700 attack. Armor crit damage. Could be better bonus stats. That's, that's not bad. That's decent for a Vulcan. But no, you're right. I think we should go again on the Alamac. 
Let's run it back on the Alamac to see if we can get a better B copy. Please give us a good attack step. Okay, it's still green. No purples. Holy damage, damage reduction. Better. Better. 3,800 attacks. Still good bonus stats as well. Do we throw the B- minus or the B on Tussalago? For the lols? It's not for the lols, it's just so we have a tenant. Just the B-. minus. And if it ends up being a real stinker, we just sell it and buy a better copy. Hopefully it's not bad, though. We're hoping for green in attack. That's all that matters. As long as green comes down, we're okay. So for the first thing we see is purple. Big sad. Okay, good, good. Great start. Wow. Oh! From a B-, minus, you get a B. That is a high roll. Yeah, better than Alamac. <laughs> so we've decided to use our final B stone on yet another Alamac. Come on, give us a high roll. That is what we would love to see here. Green across the board. Oh, why? I mean, that's still great bonus stats. Damage reduction is still getting in here. But the, the HP is huge. Is, is it that much better? Let's see. Because that's a whopping amount of HP you pulled. That is a high roll on HP. So actually, I'd use the higher attack Alomac, this one, on your tenant, and swap in this for way more HP. Because it's not that much of a loss in attack, but you then get a better tenant from the other Alomac. So it's wonky, but it works. And you'd end up not having a B- in HP, which would kind of suck. And also, it slows your Alomac down because he's only got B- in speed, which is kind of good. So let's finish up with a C plus in Fiona. Oh, it's a C minus? Wow, it's not even a C plus stone. This is really wonky. Ah! 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 What, what is this? Given everything we've done, let's take a look what that puts us at for the Soul Awakening offers. Yo, that was 96 points just, just straight up. That's not bad. That's a lot of points. But now we need to focus on the rest of the stuff to get to 300. Oh, come on! What is this? That is a B minus. By no means usable, but it's it's not bad. You can sell it. It's good points. Okay, let's claim all of this stuff through. And let's go take a look how that does for the Soul Awakening offers. 225 points already. Nice. Claim all that through. That's our last elusive mirror copy we need. Half a million stellar shards, and we get the essence sublimation chest. So what we'll do is we'll go back here, use this sublimation chest, and that means we can finish Vulcan sublimed. Beautiful. So, Vulcan, what are you getting me, buddy? Anything good? Nope. And for the Mockman, E-. minus. With those two done, that puts us at 67 more points needed. So if we do our Fionas, that should be us finished. Oh, it's purple again. C plus would be nice. C in attack. That's better than what we had. For a D-, minus, and I think this might be our last one. That's going to be an E+. Plus. And there you go, folks. That is going to be 301 points here for John in the Soul Awakens. So let's go ahead. And for John, I, I honestly don't know if it's cause or sublimation. Both? Both are really good. I'm going to go and wait on that and take a look at what we can do for upgrading the heroes that we have. So I want to start with Alamac here. Alamac really would appreciate this passive right here. We can't upgrade that right now. Currently, Elena would also like the same thing. Also, Elena needs her active skill finishing, so let's just pop that in there. There you go. Halora's fine. Betty doesn't need anything. Natalie needs as much as she can get because she's going to be your next Destiny hero after Vulcan. So I guess we could do Natalie's active skill. Honestly, I think it's subs because there's no point trying to upgrade a Natalie's core when you don't have the subs to finish her off. So let's go to the event and let's claim a sub chest from here. You will want to get some core chests soon, though, for Natalie's core. But you also are going to need Destiny materials for that, and that's going to be ages away as well. So you've got a lot of waiting to do, John, before even Natalie Destiny makes any sense. So yeah, we'll go for Passive 2 here. I'll open this up twice. That's going to be Elena. Because Elena's Passive 2 is very important. Do we finish the basic? Because her basic's cracked. Can't we do both? Yes, we can do both. But then if we do both, that comes at the cost of nothing on Alamac. I, I think we go with Natalia. I think, I think we go with Natalia's basic, her passive two, and then we finish Alamac over time. So I'll get one for basic. We'll do passive three for Natalie. 
and then we'll do passive two here for Rayla Mac. And we'll put that in. And John, as you get more of these, we'll be able to finish this up. So next up for John, we need to get Destiny on this Vulcan. And I think that might be our final thing to do today, actually. And then we're just good for John to go ahead and muck around with this account. So what I'll do is I'll enter into here. We need to get this to level 120. We got still loads of Stellar Shards, which is nice. So quick upgrade to here. And let's go to the Destiny Tree. Transition Temple. And we need to convert these into normal Aurora Gems. There you go. So let's activate this. And that's going to get us our active skill here upgraded. So that's going to be fantastic for Vulcan. Also, we're going to rise him up to Origin 100. There we go. That's Origin 100. And let's go again up into Surge and get to Surge 100. So that's added an extra 768,000 fixed attack and um, 92 million HP onto your Vulcan. Plus he's Divine Power 2 now. So that's good for him. Also, he can grant shields to the frontline allies. So that's nice. Extra protection is good. You can increase your armor and block as well, actually, which is synergistic with Alamax. So they're all good choices here. Actually, I think upping your block's not a bad idea because it makes you more likely to block, which then, of course, gets you shields from Alamax anyway. Now, given the sheer volume of Golden Spirit, I am going to go ahead and get X upgrade 100 on your Vulcan. And I'm probably going to go and do the same thing to Natalie and Alamax. Right. Do you think it's worth putting Tree of Origin 5? on the Betty, just because it gives her more HP. I have 13 million Stellas sitting around. Oh, actually, Eos. Eos is so much more important. Tree of Origin 5, Tenant. Let's get Eos up. There you go. That's Tree of Origin 5 on Eos. So with the last of our Stellar Shards, of which we have 7 million, I'm going to go ahead and throw them onto our Tenants to make our Vulcan more powerful. So let's start off with the Mockman. Let's make him Void 3. And now we can finish with Tussalago as well. In fact, I don't think you're going to need Ignis anymore for Star Expedition. No. So what you can do is you can remove this off Ignis as well. Oh, that even buys us more Stellar Shards. Yeah, perfect. So we can use those to finish the Alomag. And now we can get ourselves the Fiona upgraded as well. And there you go. That's fully attack upgraded on Fiona as well. We've just got this random Asmodel here. Which we could just go take all this off. And that's exactly 15 Void Improved Heroes. Which is perfect for the Void Arc. So we could, if we wanted to, just Tree of Origin 5 Betty right now. That would be extraordinarily satisfying. It helps speed-wise. It does. It gives her more survival. And then all John needs to do is get a decent B copy. So I think it makes sense. You'll eventually want it anyway, so... Everything else is going to get put into Destiny Heroes thereafter. It's not like you're going to need to build anybody else. <laughs> wow! John, you ran out of spiritual essence! Man, that is amazing. So all you need to do is get some more of those. Then you're done. But the problem is, if you want a Destiny Natalie at any point, you might have to go and rip that all off of Betty again. That is wild. That is a great place to be. Imagine Spiritual Essence is your bottleneck, not Stellar Shards. And yeah, the, the Natalie's far in the future, so you're just going to have to get some Spiritual Essence passively over time, finish off this Betty up to Tree of Origin 5, full send on Vulcan once you get some more Destiny materials, use more Stellars to improve him, get him to Divine Power 3. Also, for Divine Power 3, that'll cost you 1.5 million, which is exactly what you have here in Stellar Shards as well, which is perfect. So you should be able to do that, no problem. So yeah, you're in a great place, John. This this is a beautiful selection of eight heroes. 15 Void 3s or higher is perfect for Void Arc. And that just means, guys, we've got a few things to do. If we wanted more Stellar Shards, we have 150 freaking cores, guys. 150. How silly is that? Also, we haven't even done the Treasure Train yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do 150 tickets in the hero token. And because we can, let's go fight these void campaign bosses. Because if you look at some of these, they just haven't been beaten. Look at that difficulty one on this. Mate, we're wrecking that today. So, John, let's send it in, my friend. Let's get lucky. Oh, well, 
Already getting some good stuff there. You've got a green, you've got a red, and we're probably going to see you get a lot of these for the first time. That's a heck of a lot of things there. Look, we got a purple, we got a red, we got two more purples there. It is all coming through. And as John hasn't spent money in the last three years, he probably hasn't invested much in the treasure train. So this is going to be a huge boost for him when we're finished. Absolutely colossal. Remember, we were at 800,000 before we started. Look, we're getting some purples there too, rolling in. Really nice. From this... Oh, we keep getting pink shards, man. Oh, we got the hat! That's good! That's real good. That's going to help Betty out. What else can we pull? Oh, more shards? But we still got that green one there. That's nice. Okay. Come on, hero token. Do not let me down. Good. Purple, red. Looking nice. Send it again. Okay, more purples. And a green there. Nice. Okay, we got a red. We got a green. Not much else. And oh my word... Imagine if that was insane, but it wasn't. It was just shards. We need to get a couple purples there, though. But it wasn't what I wanted. Oh, let's go! We got a pink, boys. We got a few reds as well. Oh, man. But the pink is huge. And a purple there, too. That's real good. The best one as well. Yeah. More shards coming through here. Oh, we got Azrael's flute. We got another hat. Oh, we got a red and a green there, and some purple too. This is a really good run. More shards. We're getting a lot of those shards, man. And we got a red glove there, and red spyglass. That's nice. From this one. Oh, more pink shards. You are getting teased hard, dude. Some green and purple there too. And this is the final 10. And you get more shards. Fair play. Right, John, let's quick operate and see what that does for us. So tons of stuff getting obtained through here. First time you've got Queen's Cup as well. That's really, really good. So there you go. That's amazing. That instantly takes you to 1.27 million in fixed attack. And if we go to Hero Token, we can take some of this higher. So let's open this pink one for Queen's Cup. No question about it. That's absolutely the best grab here. And for this, this is tough. We could go with Azrael's Flute, as that's going to give you more crit damage reduction and way more attack. So that could be a good shout. And we just want to get as much stat-wise as we can from Hero Token. If we can break 1,250, we're going to get even more stats from here. Just by grabbing that, that's 1.3 million you've got here. Yeah, I think we grabbed the Flute. I think that's your best pick. Crit damage reduction for Warriors as well helps Ailerback, and it helps Vulcan. And you've already got two upgrades on here, that control immunity offset for mages, which is really nice already. So we don't even have to prioritize this. Quick operation, upgrade that, two star, beautiful. And points on hero token, that gets you to 867. So not far off from the 1250 we need to get the bonus stats. I'm going to save your other chests for now, John, because there's nothing obvious really. You don't want heal effect from priests. And there's no point getting these extra ones on. They're not going to get you too much at the moment. So I just wait and use your red chest to iron out whatever's left. And then the greens and purples, just use them as they come. Whatever needs ironing out, put it in there. But the main stuff up here is getting the oranges and the pinks in. And that is looking real good. So as you can see, John now has 133 million fixed HP, 1.3 million fixed attack. And this is fully free to play, guys, uh, when it comes to his treasure train. He's not whaled on treasure train at all. This is really, really clean. And now I think it's just about time we went ahead and put our heroes in the Celestial Island to see just how much attack this is going to give John's Vulcan. That's already giving him four and a half million attack, and that's without good equipment and flags. For Ailamac here, we put him in this one. We've got this Ailamac there. We've got Star Alchemist Holmes Young. We've got Fiona, and we've got Sword Flash. That's going to give him 2.6. Let me go sort out the equipment, and we'll see just how much stat gain that gives us. So in that case, I think we're looking pretty good. We've got everyone upgraded. We've got a speed tie here between Halora and Vulcan. So we put Halora ahead in the lineup. And yeah, I think we're going to pop off if we fight some of these bosses. So we'll fight here the second boss. It's difficulty two. This should be okay. I'm going to double check our team. We're currently using Vulcan with Gilded Purple Fan. Holy skill. We've got Crown here on Natalia. We've got Crown Alamac. We've got Crown Elena. And then we're rocking Demon Bell Freya and Demon Bell Halora, which are both going to help us. 
Everyone's built for speed. This is going to be absolutely glorious. Let's go send this in. And by the way, this is before we've tuned up all the armor and things, because I'm going to not bother doing resonance armor. I'll leave that for John to do in his own time. But we should still absolutely crush this. So we want Halora at the front. And we're going to want Natalie here too. And then Vulcan, I'll just put him in the middle here. Aelomac can go slot three. And we'll have Elena and Freya just behind. And this should absolutely steamroll the opponent. I'll go Phoenix here for the extra crit damage. And we'll activate Vulcan's core. Let's see how we do here. Heck, we could even be running Snake here because of um, Freya being first. And yeah, we got great block here from Aelomac, which is going to give you so many shields. Look at the shields coming through here, dude. This is fantastic. Oh, brilliant. We didn't even go ahead and double check the stats on Aelomac and Vulcan just to see how much they were gaining from this. But as you can tell, this is going really, really well. Oh yeah, we're basically full on shields. And when Vulcan gets an active, he's going to dominate these guys. Here he comes. I think Halor is going to go first as well, which will be really, really good. So there we go. Vulcan pops off. Already putting a big chunk of damage into them. And that's before he's been given weakness disclosure. So we should have this one done, no problem. So we just got to energy feed Vulcan back up. And he's going to shred... Okay, we got stunned there, which is a little unfortunate. Elena breaking us free, though, which is nice. Elena really does so much against the second boss. Absolutely helps here. And you can see we have energy here on Halora with her Demon Bell. She is going to energy feed us. Same thing for Freya. So that is going to be a Vulcan active, provided no one gets stunned. So let's see it. Here we go. Freya goes. Then Halora. Now Vulcan sends it in. Beautiful damage crashing onto the opponent. I don't even think we've got to weakness disclosure yet. No. So we are getting tanky, boys. Absolutely tanky. Stun there on Natalie. That's not too much of an issue. Silence there on Freya. Does break free. Ooh, and Freya's going to energy feed Halora here if we're lucky. Yep. And oh, Vulcan just misses out on an active. That's a shame. But that does mean next round he's going to absolutely go to town. Here we go. Also, Natalie's going to do an active first. Potentially. No, she's just doing her basics, but that is debuffing the opponent. And I think Vulcan's ready to send it now. He's fully charged. Here he comes. Great crowd control on the little guy there. Slowly but surely burning his way through. In fact, Antler's Cane here on Vulcan would be really, really good. This is Yeah, this is not with Balance Strike, no. So this is just Unbending Will, I think. Really, really safe build. Guild of Purple fan. Unbending will. Yeah, weakness disclosure incoming. Come on, Vulcan. Send it. There he goes. Finally getting some kills on the opponents. That's good. Yeah, I think Atlas Kane's the play here. Absolutely. We've got no survival problems. Not against this boss, anyway. There you go. Vulcan slowly but surely tearing through the opponent now. The only issue we have is the crowd control from the enemy, which is annoying. And Vulcan should absolutely slay it now. Here we go, buddy. There it is. Nice. Glorious damage there. And that gets you some more Stella. That gets you some Aurora Gems and Scattered Spirit Vein Shards. Okay, given how that went, I think Antlers Cane's definitely the pick here. Just to further boost our damage. And for those of you curious, Vulcan's currently 11.6 million on attack. And that's before we've given Eos a flag. So if we drop that on here... That actually takes us to 12 million. That's real nice. So let's go pure Unga Bunga damage. Let's put Balance Strike on. And he should wreck this much quicker. And level the Eos up. Oh, yeah. We could even put X100 on the Eos. You're right. We're running out of spirit, but I don't even freaking care here. <laughs> We're not going to need any more after this. Very low on spirit, but you can always buy more with gold. And there you go. That's another half a million attack there on Vulcan. Twelve and a half million. Absolutely colossal. So let's fight this next boss then and see how we do. And this time around, I'm going to get with the snake, I think, as that's going to synergize nicely 
with our team. Giving us extra skill damage on Vulcan. Also, we get that added damage to poisoned opponents, which is going to help with Freya. And you're right, we get extra block from Snake too, which means we get extra shield chances with Alomac. And against this kind of enemy, where the Alomac shields are just stopping us from dying entirely, we're completely fine. If you look Halora and Freya, they don't even care. They're sitting there with demon bells and they're just being fine. The rest of the team's got golden crowns. But yeah, what's going to happen here now? We're going to get slow ramp up with Vulcan to the point where by the time we're at like round six, he's going to be an absolute unit. Absolutely crazy. And you think the Freya core would be helpful here? No need, man. No need. Freya's core does very little for increasing damage. That is not going to make a difference. Also, she hasn't got one and there's no real reason for John to get it. The Vulcan core is perfectly fine. So yeah, no point picking up Freya core just for the sake of it. It's such a waste. We need to prioritize getting heroes like Natalie and that upgraded. And MFF score was better before train. Yeah, attack percentage scaling doesn't really do much against fixed stats, so... It's not that helpful. And it also mucks with your speed orders, which would be a problem here. Okay, here we go. Come on, Vulcan. Big active. Okay, a little bit of a chunk of damage. We didn't have weakness disclosure, but... He's getting there. Oh, he's got two charges. Come on, get the third charge, Volk. Send it. The annoying thing is most of Vulcan's ramp up comes from when enemies die, so... We are just relying on our team's actives now. To pump him up. But he's doing fine, nonetheless. We're going to have Freya into Halora here as well, which is really going to be good. Ooh, getting the stuns off as well from Alamac. That's kind of clutch. Oh no, we're CC'd on Freya. Will Elena break us free? Yes, she does. That's really good. Here comes Freya. Here comes Halora and Vulcan. Oh, now he's getting the damage in. Yeah. And as Antlers Kane does more and more and more work, we're going to do really nicely. Come on, buddy. You can get weakness disclosure, Vulcan. You can do it. I think this is it. I think he's ready to go. I might be wrong, but I think he's got weakness disclosure now. There we go. Pretty hefty damage. So yeah, as you can see, we should just sit through this and Vulcan's just going to become stronger and stronger and stronger with Antlers Kane. We've got no survival issues here whatsoever. And we definitely win. Come on, Vulcan. Huge active. Let's send it in! Oh, it didn't kill the boss, but it definitely killed the minions. Come on, man. We're on round 13. Don't you let me down here. There we go! Finally! Nice kill. Honestly, for difficulty 4, I think we go pure greed. We're not having any survival problems. So I'm going to go and put demon bells on the whole team. Either way, we got one more fight here, and I think super greedy with demon bells is absolutely the play. Let's see how this goes. So you see, we're taking a bit more damage here, but we are blocking... So we do get shields thanks to Alamac. And as soon as Freya does an active, we're going to be super, super tanked up. Uh-oh, Vulcan looking low HP. I don't like this. There we go, Freya giving us the much-needed survival. Okay, okay, this is, this is a little hairy now. We took a lot of damage. I'm worried about the actives here. I might need to put damage reduction and block onto Vulcan. Okay, he's surviving. Oh, he did gain shields. That's clutch. Oh, we lost Halora. Okay. We're taking a little bit more damage than I'd like here. But we will be doing more damage. So, you never know. This might still pay off, even with Halora dead. Actually, with all our energy speed, I think this is still going to be completely fine. 
I still think we're gonna be okay. The only thing that worries me here is um, is Vulcan, just because he's not gaining shields as quickly. But yeah, if survival ever becomes an issue, you can just switch to golden crowns on the lineup. And yeah, Betty to crowd control the minions could be pretty helpful too. I've seen people kill this with less. Even even I've seen people beat this without even having six transcendence heroes. So you should be okay. That said, though, they had eight tiers. And oh, Elena got one shot. With Elena dead, now this is a little scary because the control effects could be a big problem. Come on, Vulcan. Huge active. That that said, though, him getting CC does mean he's saving up his charges for his active skill here. Oh, he CC'd again. No. No. Come on, Vulcan. Big active. You can do it. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh no. Here we go. Come on, dude. Please. Dead. Hey, uh, yeah. I should have gone. We need crown on Lena here. Yep. All demon bells was too greedy. I thought we could push the boat. But no, the boat pushed us. That's good to know, though. We can definitely beat that. We'll just go back to the crown build. And I think that should do pretty well. And if, if damage is ever an issue, it's just trying to find the right balance between demon bells and golden crowns. And Betty can help with survival, too, if we need it. Actually, she could definitely help with survival. So you might want to swap out DGN, for example, and you could put in Therapist of Blood Betty, and you could give her an Elusive Mirror or even a Ruyi Scepter just for consistent crowd control. That could work really nicely here. So you've got a few options here, John, but either way, you're definitely going to be beating those bosses, no problem, and you'll be really, really good. So if you, if you energy feed the Betty, exactly what Everaitic said in chat, he is kind of stating the obvious um, as to why Betty's so good, but you know, someone's got to say it. Because uh, when Betty gets energy fed, she hits 100 energy. She's going to trigger twice if you've got a core. And John does have her core because John knows what he's doing. So this is good. So uh, yeah, honestly, John, this is going to be absolutely fantastic. Just got to get yourself some more spiritual essence to finish off this Betty to Tree of Origin 5. And then you'll need some more to get DGN all the way up to 120. And then that's going to be destiny for her way in the future. Don't have to worry about that now. Just focus on getting your sublimations to finish off the Alamac. And then you'll want to finish off Natalie. Get Natalie's core. Plenty of things to focus on here, John. And your account looks absolutely amazing since when we started. So, John, hopefully that sets you up for the future. I know his account was long overdue a massive overhaul. And he still has 150 cores sat in the bag. But I don't want to ruin his bag space by opening them. But if you have any food and stellar shards... All he needs to do is look at this pile because the cores contain both. It's been a pleasure, my dude. And if you guys want to go ahead and check out more Idle Heroes content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button as we upload here pretty frequently. And you can see my accounts, me overholding other people's accounts, or even just event reviews and guides to help you make progress in the future. Until next time, have an amazing week. And of course, happy idling. <laughs>